Thus far, our discussion has focused on the use of a bond's market price to calculate its yield to maturity. Or reverse the process and apply a known or estimated market discount rate on a bond's future cash flows to calculate the value of a bond. What if we don't have either of them? This can happen in the case where the bond is not publicly or actively traded, or we're trying to price a new bond issue. In such situations, it's common to estimate the market discount rate and price based on the quote or flat prices of more frequently traded comparable bonds. These comparable bonds should have similar credit quality to the bond of interest. This estimation process is called matrix pricing. For example, an analyst wishes to determine the price of a bond which is not publicly traded. This bond has four years left to maturity, pays 9% fixed coupons semi-annually. What she can do is to find the market prices of a number of actively traded bonds that have similar credit quality. For example, if the bond has a credit rating of BBB, the comparable bonds should also have a credit rating of BBB. The next step is to determine the yield to maturity of these bonds based on their prices, coupon rates and time to maturity. You should be familiar with this by now. Using the discounted cash flow method, we get a yield to maturity of 6.5% for bond A, 6.6% for bond B, 7.9% for bond C and 7.7% for bond D. The key is to use the rates of comparable bonds to estimate the market discount rate for the bond we're interested in. As we know, the discount rate tends to increase with the time to maturity as there is a maturity risk premium. Our bond of interest has four years to maturity. None of these comparable bonds have four years to maturity, but we can use their yields to estimate its yield. One simple way is to use the interpolation method. We start with finding the average of the yields of bond A and bond B, which is 6.55%, and bond C and D, which is 7.8%. The difference between the two yields is 1.25%. Since the relationship is linear, the increase in yield for the four year over the two year should be two thirds of 1.25%. The yield to maturity for bond X should therefore be 6.55% plus two-thirds of 1.25, which is 7.38%. Now that we have the market discount rate of the bond, we can apply it to its future cash flows to estimate the value of the bond. This should be very familiar by now. Number of periods is eight, as there are eight more half-year periods to maturity. Interest per period is half the market discount rate that we've estimated. Payment is 4.5, half of the 9% coupon rate and FV is the par value of 100. Solve for PV, we get minus 105.52. So according to the analyst, this non-publicly traded bond is valued at 105.52 using the matrix pricing method. So we've looked at one method to value bonds that are privately or not actively traded. Let's look at another method that is more often used for pricing new issuance. The principle is to get an estimate of the required yield spread over the benchmark rate. The benchmark rate is considered the risk-free rate, typically derived from the yield to maturity on a government bond having a similar time to maturity. The yield spread is the compensation required by investors for the additional credit risk, liquidity risk and tax status of the bond relative to the government bond. Yield spreads are often stated in basis points. Both of these will be covered in detail in a later topic, so we shall explain them briefly here. At any time, there are government bonds trading with various times to maturity, so we can form a continuum known as the yield curve. For a particular issuer or issuers with similar credit quality, their bonds also trade at various times to maturity at various spreads above the yield curve. The basic concept is to get or estimate the benchmark rate that has the same time to maturity as the bond to be issued. This is followed by estimating the corresponding spread for that time to maturity. For both of them, we can simply use the interpolation method of the closest bonds. So for example, if a company wants to issue a bond of 10 years to maturity, we can estimate the benchmark yield as the midpoint between the yields of government bonds with 9 and 11 years to maturity. This works out to a benchmark yield of 3.2%. 
Likewise, we estimate the spread specific to this issuer, based on similar bonds with 9 and 12 years to maturity. This works out to a yield spread of 2.9%. Adding up the two estimated yields, we have an estimated discount rate of 6.1% for this new issue. The issuer may want to set the coupon rate at 6% and sell the bond at a discount. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.